Now, let's get into the New, New Testament. And, and we're dealing with a, you got to sift through the mud, you know. You know how you dig for gold? You know, you got to pick up the little pan and chuk, 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 to get the little gem. You have to do that with the New Testament. And sometimes you're going to get, what happens sometimes? You sift and there's nothing but mud. Uh, so sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to find uh, uh, the, the, the gold in there sometimes. Let me see where I want to start here. Okay. Now, with, with the doctrine of the New Testament. Now, I want to show you some of the books that I use. I'm just going to show them to you, and uh, you can write these down. This one has just been published, and it is a gem. It is a gem. I always pray, and I ask everyone to pray for the guidance of Bart Ehrman. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may, may He guide Bart Ehrman, inshaAllah ta'ala, because the, the evidence that he has done against the Bible is... is Man, it, he lays it on so thick. I, I mean, he lays it on thick as it can get, man. You know, drinking drinking Bart Ehrman's coffee uh, and, and drinking everyone else's coffee is the same like going and drinking down this watered Kenko coffee than, you know, than, than some good Algerian coffee, you know, some good Turkish coffee. Uh, it, it's, it's really thick how he lays it on. And it, this book... And, I, and actually, I know him very well. Uh, he, he, he lives not far from where I was born and raised. And I got this book before it ever hit the press. Um, and it's amazing. It's called uh, Jesus Interrupted. Jesus Interrupted. The hidden contradictions in the Bible and why we don't know about them. Jesus Interrupted. And a lot of stuff is going to come from here. And I'll give you the, con the table of contents. He talks about... His first chapter is a world of contradictions. He doesn't say a group of words. He says there's a world of contradictions. Also a mass of variant views, which I'm going to explain to you. Also, he, who wrote the Bible? Which is kind of a sarcastic way he's saying it because we don't know. Um, then he says, liar, lunatic, or Lord. Finding out the historical Jesus. Because if you read different documents, they say different things about Jesus. How we got the Bible and he says who invented Christianity. That's what this book is about. Who in it, called Jesus interrupted, and you can get this. Um, I don't know. Do you have Bar Do you guys have Barnes and Noble in the UK? What kind of? What is the major bookseller? Amazon. Get it. Get it from Amazon. Amazon. You can get it very cheap. Amazon. You get it very cheap. This is his latest book. I, I, I'm, I'm in my third time reading it. The the first major book that he wrote that I read that he gave to me is called Misquoting Jesus. The story behind who changed the Bible and why. It's called Misquoting Jesus. The story behind who changed the Bible and why. And he gives evidence after evidence after evidence after evidence. If you read these two books, you would know more than I could teach you in six months. You would know more than I could teach you in six months. Believe me. And the table of contents for this one is just as thick. The beginnings of Christian scripture, the copyist of early Christian writings, the text of the New Testament, edit, editions, manuscripts, and differences, the quest for origins, origins that matter, the, uh, theologically motivated alterations of the text of the New Testament, the social world of the text, conclusion, how we changed scriptures. And this is not some crackpot. This is a, a professor of textual criticism at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. And he is a graduate of, uh, he's, a, he's a doctorate of... Uh, the the theology from Princeton University. This is not some fool. Yes, brother. You have something? Is he actually a Christian? Yes. What is it? Is he actually a Christian? No, he's left Christianity. Like I said, I don't agree with all his conclusions because he's now almost become an atheist. He also wrote a book that I would say never read. It's called God, uh, The Problem of God. Or no, God's Problem. Why God Allows Innocent People to Suffer. Because he... De he I, I, I have not been able to get him to this understanding of the, the divine reasoning behind injustice. You, you understand what I'm saying? This is his hang-up. He does not understand 
the reason behind injustice, which I've tried to get to him, but he's just, he's so caught up in his own ideologies that he, he doesn't get it yet. But no, he's not a Christian anymore. Another book that I use is called The History of the Church. This is by Eusebius. Eusebius is one of the early church fathers. He is one of the, I guess you can say, like we refer to the Salaf of the scholars of, of, of the ulama. He is one of the Salaf of the scholars of Christianity. He's one of the predecessors. He's one of the early first generation scholars of Christianity. And this is called the early church where he's describing all of the things that were happening during his period of time which were in the first two, were the first generations of Christians. And, and he did believe in, in Jesus but as God and all of these things but if you'll read the things that were happening at his time you'll see that the picture of Christianity is much different from the one that we uh, see today. And all of these you can find on, on Amazon. You spell Eusebius, E-U-S-E-B-I-U-S. -E -E That's a mouthful. E-U-S-E-B-I-U-S. -E -E Eusebius. E-U-S-E-B-I-U-S. -E -E and this book is called The History of the Church. Good book. If you, want, if you want to know what you're talking about. Another one is called The Early Church by Henry Chadwick who is one of the leading scholars of Christianity of the time Henry Chadwick wrote a book called The Early Church the story of emergent Christian Christianity from the apostolic age to dividing of the ways between the Greek East and the Latin West he talks about a lot of differences that the churches had uh, that had to be the conflicts that arose in Christianity even about who Jesus was and we're going to talk about some of those uh, God willing and this is by Henry Chadwick C-H-A-D-W-I-C-K Henry Chadwick wrote this book and like I said this is probably five six books out of a library full that, that I use but I, I, I can't drag around the library um, this one Bart Ehrman wrote amazing book called Lost Christianities the battles for scripture and faith that we never knew Lost Christianities, the battle for faith and scriptures that we never knew. Talking about all of the books that didn't make it into the Gospels, that didn't make it into the Bible, and why? Why? Was it because they weren't so good? Or was it politically motivated? Or was it theologically motivated? Was there a system of eradication? Was there a system of political anthology going on at the time of the Council of Nicaea that allowed these things to happen? Bar Ehrman goes into depth detail explaining this, and he also lays out and gives you a lot of the um, um, the documents that are in here. He's, he wrote another book called Lost Scriptures. Lost Scriptures by Bart Ehrman. I would say you can read all of Bart Ehrman's books except God's Problem. Don't read that book, man. It's just rubbish. A waste of time. And these now we're getting to some real textbooks. These, these I wouldn't say are for the lay reader. What I just gave you are kind of like, you know, novel type readings. The, the, these are a little more, a little more serious here. This one is also by Bart Ehrman and Andrew Jacobs. So, and these are text, college level textbooks. Uh, these are college level real textbooks. This one's called Christianity in the Late Antiquity. Christianity through 300 to 450 CE. This is Christianity through 150 years. Uh, what happened? And, and, and the reason why you have to study this one is this is the the main crux of how we got to where we are now in Christianity. The Council of Nicaea and all of that is during this area. The, the eradication of other Christian groups that happened after the Council of Nicaea. The burning of the other scriptures. The killing of people who do not believe what the Council of Nicaea had believed. If you believe that Jesus was a prophet and he was not of the same and unique nature of God, uh, you were uh, under threat to be killed and eradicated and your churches be burned and your scriptures be destroyed. And this is written by Bart Ehrman and Andrew Jacobs. But you can just, you know, Amazon search these books, Christianity and the Late Antiquity. These last three are going to cost you a pretty penny. Just because they're college level textbooks. I don't know why. I think this one maybe would cost you, this one is about $80. Uh, I don't, you're, so you're looking at roughly, you know, 60 pounds, around 60 quid. Uh, but this one is a good one. This one is called After the New Testament. After the New Testament, a, a study in early Christianity. And this one is amazing. This one goes through a lot of the different books that were being read by uh, uh, Christians in the first century. 
of Christianity and we come to realize the, the, the beliefs of the people who politically